Thank you, Mr. Speaker. At first, Al Gore claimed to invent the Internet. Now it looks like he really did invent something, global warming. The nation had one of the coldest winters in years, including record snowfalls in the South. But the warmers, like Al Gore, ignore the obvious and still claim we're all going to perish, saying man is the threat to the planet. The groundhog is a better predictor of the weather than Al Gore. Al Gore's long-winded article in the New York Times over the weekend was long on claims and short on facts. He didn't cite hard sources for his information. Like the rest of the global warming scientists, who they are using fraudulent information. We're supposed to take their word for it now that basic data supporting their claims has all of a sudden disappeared. That data remains to be, has been found to be fraudulent. It's no wonder that data is disappearing. There seems to be no conclusive scientific data that proves the global warming theory. It's a theory. That's what a theory is, something that isn't proven. The federal government is trying to force Americans to pay a cap and trade national energy tax, and it's all based on this highly disputed theory of global warming. United Nations International Panel on Climate Change issued a report in 2007 that made all kinds of claims about global warming. The, the report is based on some faulty science. ClimateGate started last year when a whistleblower blower released emails between all these global warming scientists. The emails and other information released showed these guys had been cooking the books. It's still a huge scandal unfolding on the front pages of newspapers all over the world, especially in England. The Climate Research Unit at East Anglia University in England is the center of the Climate Gate scandal. That's where the emails were released by this anonymous whistleblower. Some email revealed global warming scientists plotting to avoid disclosing information under the Freedom of Information Act and under the Freedom of Information Act in England. And of course, that's against the law in England. Other email even showed this so-called scientist talking about how to manipulate the data, how to fix the outcome of their scientific experiments. Sounds like fraud to me. Then they spread this false information around to their buddies with a pro without a proper peer review. That's how you perpetrate a hoax. The data at at the basis of all of these findings are based on the same fraudulent data from one of these small group of scientists. And if global warming's the truth, why are these scientists caught in lie after lie? If it's the truth, why would they be lying to the American people in the first place? The British scientific community spoke about that this week and, and against their climate science peers. The British Institute of Physics this week said, quote, unless the disclosed emails are proven to be forgeries, Worrying implications arise for the integrity of scientific research and for the credibility of the scientific method. There's no credible proof man causes the weather changes. It's a way to build millions of dollars out of taxpayers with a so-called carbon tax. It seems to be all about money. Of course, Mr. Gore is heavily invested in green technology. Last year, he was proclaimed by the media to be the first green technology billionaire. That's a billionaire with a B. Al Gore's made a fortune off of global warming, and so have a lot of other people. He should have to take back his claims with hard data, or back up his claims with hard data, not the data that has been proved to be false. And he would have to prove all of the wild claims, and other scientists should have to prove these claims as well about man being the culprit of global warming. The fact is that global warming is not a fact. The jury is still out, and that's just the way it is.